from legendary locals we all know to people you should get to know. Follow Ipswich Today on your favourite app and never miss an episode or go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Coming up, technology and soundproof booths are helping to teach coping with life skills to young Indigenous teens in Ipswich. Places are now available in a new 10-week program. Vital Hub's Russ Wright joins the show to explain more. It's Wednesday, August 7, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. Vital Hub Ipswich is about to launch a new technology-based program for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young people between the ages of 12 and 17. It's targeting stress, anxiety, trauma and other mental health challenges. And to tell us more, I'm joined by Russ Wright from Vital Hub. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today, Russ. Yeah, thank you, Alan. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. Firstly, describe for me what Vital Hub is more broadly about. Well, it's uh, Vital Projects is the uh, is a non-profit charity that powers Vital Hub. We've been uh, been pioneering young people uh, and working with young people for nearly forty years, and um, we have been re- doing values-based programs in schools and training uh, schools workers um, and support workers to run our programs, which have been highly successful. Where the reports back are saying just uh, double class a week after eight weeks. Uh, we're getting 70% reduction in suspension rates um, by the end of the term. So that's uh, that's been great. But the last, when we hit COVID, um, a lot of young people didn't want to come into group work or weren't coming to school or too anxious. And um, being an ex-Sparky, I, uh, I'm always interested in technology. And I thought, well, um, yeah, I've been looking at it and playing with it and uh, and uh, trialling it, and it was, it was working. That's all. Let's see if we can get a grant to uh, put this technology together, and um, and yeah, the federal government gave us a, a grant, and so we spent a year putting that together. Um, we've got using four different technologies, and uh, we have sound, nine different soundproof booths, and uh, youth mentors, and yes, we've uh, had the first year, and uh, it's been yeah, it's been highly successful. We've had um, so you've had the first year, but you're going to be continuing. Is that right? Yes, so it's we uh, we had the we had the funding up till January this year, um, and we had Bond University do uh, research on us, and um, they did uh, formal interviews four to six weeks afterwards with um, seventeen young people they caught up with, and there was a hundred percent change in um, uh, positive impacts in their their attitude and life choices. So we knew we were onto a good thing. Um, We've had to try and charge then to survive uh, since January, and so just getting our name known. And because we're different, it's not we're non-talk therapy. Uh, people don't have to uh, talk about their stories. We're finding that's just re-traumatizing them a lot. Um, and so they they can select their own journey and and give them given the tools to just reduce um, any trauma and stress that they they are, are carrying. And so up till now, and now we've got yeah this grant for First Nations people. Um, so that's uh, so really keen to yeah already started on that. We've got our first um, participant in today actually. With the technology uh, emphasis, you mentioned the soundproof rooms and. I think you've got virtual reality. This must differ, or does it differ significantly from traditional type support programs? Uh, yes, it does. The you know it, we're complementing the traditional, but we're finding a lot come when um, and pediatricians are sending us to to us or other counsellors because they haven't been able to find anywhere else to help their their children or young people. I remember talking to a mum who's was just in there the second week and I asked how things are going and um, she just looked up at me glowing. She said, it's just been amazing. My my daughter has been in therapy for years and she can't go to school half the time. She's too anxious, has meltdown in exams. She came to the hub in the morning, actually went to school in the afternoon and sat for her exam and got 17 out of 20 for the first time in her life and she's been calm around the home. It's just been amazing. That's, so that's, that is good news. You mentioned the soundproof rooms. What are they used for? You know, mentors uh, connect with young people uh, for about 10 minutes, uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So initially when they come in and just uh, 
find out what their goals are or what are they struggling with, what would they like to change, you know? And then uh, we introduce them to, yeah, in the soundproof booths, we have um, monitors and VR that um, our main um, our main intervention, which um, Bond University has been um, targeting, uh, Peter, St- Peter Stapleton, Dr. Peter Stapleton, who's professor of the uh, psychology there, is using a technique which calms the vagus nerve. It's a, it's a tapping technique. And they've found uh, extensive research over many uh, over a decade has found that um, yeah, tapping on the right spot while you're thinking of a negative feeling it just calms the whole amygdala, the the flight, fight and flight triggers in the brain. And so we're using this technique, um, but we've put it instead of sitting across from a counsellor, we've put it in technology. So they pick their feelings, and then that takes them on a journey of what to do and um, and where to tap. And so they pick their own journey. They're in control. Um, they don't have to talk about it. And then um, we connect with them afterwards, see where they're at. And we just don't reduce the trauma. We, um, we're actually character developers as well, being values character developers. So uh, we work with you know 55 character traits like um, resilience and, and um, being encouraging and optimistic and um, respectful. And so actually developing those um, values uh, character values is yeah we just don't want to reduce the negative but we want to replace that with the positive um, so they can walk forward and and get into life in a positive sense so each client is getting one-on-one treatment or do, do you do group sessions how does that work yeah great question we do one-on-one um and then after about four or five sessions um, we invite them to if it's suitable the champions academy which is a group work and, and that's similar to what we do in the schools but that um that's that's deepens the character um development by uh, getting feedback from from their peers and so we uh, have sequenced problem solving situations we put the group in and um unless they work together and be cooperative and, and respectful and value each each other, well, then uh, they keep failing the task. So, as they uh, as they get more successful, we yeah, we throw them more uh, challenging tasks, and their uh, their character development and be able to work as a team and listen and value each other it actually increases quite rapidly. So, you've got a broad structure for the ten weeks. Is it like a beginning, middle, and end? How is that ten weeks structured? Uh, yeah, great question. We've we uh, first connect with with the young person. Um, we, you know, trust is a big thing. So just connecting and understanding where they're from and where they're at. And um, each person we see as a as incredible value and potential. And we want to bring that potential out and connect with that person. So each one's treated as an individual. And then um, then they go on the journey. The virtual reality we have is um, we've got a number of programs. Uh, two we've created ourselves, and that gives um, gives us a values map of where they are at the moment, whether they're lacking in values or to excess in values. You know, if they lack courage or too much courage, can be rash and reckless and just as bad. So, it actually, shows young people where where they're at and why life's not working for them. And um, and we and doing our program can help them you know, find that balance and uh, be stronger in that character. So that's the that's the initial uh, first uh, few weeks, and then we do programs on uh, dealing with their own negative self talk, and then dealing with. Uh, Fear and anxiety, how they can do that, um, and not just not just uh, deal with the symptoms by you know having to breathe through it, but actually deal with it so it's not not there or or hardly there for them to so they can walk forward in their potential and then into the group work at the end. So what you've said there, Russ, is is bringing some balance and a bit of structure to their own lives. What else will they gain at the end of ten weeks? The university reported um, there was over 30 areas in uh, life skills, uh, their emotional well-being, uh, academic success, uh, passing exams, um, their in, you know interpersonal relationships. You know they were they didn't care about what others thought. One person was six months later um, since they started the program. They they uh, caught up with and interviewed, and they'd lost 20 kilos. They didn't care what other people thought. Started going to the gym started looking after themselves. So their physical well-being uh, was a big one as well, but others were able to get their license. They're too anxious to drive, and they got their license. 
Others um, kicked housemates out that they needed to kick out long ago because you know they just grew in confidence. So it's it was very much um, helping them um, step into life and and giving them to the the uh, character strength to to do what they you know wanted to do. Well, this new program for First Nations young people, how many can take part, and do you still need people to take part? Yes, um, we've been funded for twenty four young people. And um, yes, we have uh, a number of uh, sources we're, we're drawing them from, um, uh, Aboriginal groups and um, from from alternate schools and uh, from youth justice um, or child safety. But we yeah we certainly haven't um, got a kit full yet. We've, we're just starting this month to do interviews and and take interviews. So yes, if anybody's uh, is interested between 12 and 17, uh, who is First Nations and Torres Strait Islanders, um, you're uh, very welcome to contact us and um, if they live in the Ipswich area and can get their regular 10 sessions in um, one one every week. All righty, I'll put a uh, handy link in the show notes there, Russ, so people can just click through from that. But on that note, we will leave it there. Thank you so much for speaking with Ipswich today. Thank you, Alan. And that's it for this episode. You will find handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. Enjoying Ipswich today? Please share the love on your socials.